What's up guys? It's Meg. I'm here today to talk about season four, episode three of The Walking Dead. I'm so very, very excited to talk about it today because it was a crazy episode and so much stuff happened. Um, but first warning, there's going to be lots of spoilers in this, so please don't watch if you have not yet seen the episode. Um, so first things first, we should talk about Karen and David's death and Tyrese's reaction and the Tyrese and Rick fight. Um, that was kind of a big scene because Tyrese is obviously very, very angry and upset and emotional over Karen's death. It's totally understandable. Um, we expect him to be this angry because he was finally getting close to someone and she dies in a horrible, horrible way. Um, so he kind of goes a little ballistic. He, um, he punches Rick and he's so upset and um, Rick fights back. He doesn't just sit there and take it from Tyrese. He actually starts just punching the crap out of Tyrese um, and just really lets him have it. He went totally overboard, I think, at least. Um, and he must have some kind of anger that's been building up inside of him that just let loose because that was really an intense moment for Rick where we just see he's had such a calm demeanor recently being his farmer and you know self and all that kind of stuff and you know then he has to kill all his pigs and now he's got his gun back on and he's beating up Tyrese and it's just kind of a new Rick I think we're seeing or maybe a little bit of the old Rick. Um, and then I couldn't believe it that it was Carol. Um, I would really like to know what you guys were thinking if you even suspected her at all because I did not um, until I actually discovered that it was her. Uh, it makes sense though because she's really, um, she's changing. She is very um, much trying to be protective of her entire group and you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to survive and that's really what she's doing. Um, she's training the kids. Um, she, she's training them how to kill and not hesitate. And that's essentially what she did. She saw threat, uh, meaning Karen and David being sick and coughing, and she took care of that threat in order to prevent the disease from spreading. And obviously it's still spreading, but um, you know, she thought she was doing the right thing. I don't know if she's really, I think she's feeling a little bit of remorse. Um, I don't, I don't really know. It's hard to tell. Um, yes, she was crying and upset by the big water barrels, but um, I don't know how much of that was towards the actual killing of them rather than of Tyrese asking her to watch over his sister and just the horror of everything that's been happening. Um, and then speaking of people who are sick, Glenn is now sick. Um, along with Sasha, two of our main characters. Um, Glenn has a really special spot in my heart and I really don't want him to die. Um, I don't think that he's gonna die from the flu. I really don't. I think something's gonna happen. They're gonna get the antibiotics or something and they're gonna give it to him and he's gonna live through this. I don't know if he'll live through the rest of the season. I kind of have a feeling that he might not. Um, I wonder what you guys think. But I really think that he's gonna make it through this. I kind of think Sasha's gonna make it through too. Um, I don't know about everybody else. I don't think the doctor is going to survive, and there's quite a few other sick people. Um, and that leads me into Herschel. And he was in quarantine with Beth and Judith and some of the other kids, Carl. Um, and he goes out of quarantine to go collect elderberries in the woods. Carl is a little shit again um, and threatens to tell his dad that Herschel's leaving, like, oh, I'm gonna tell on you. I swear, Carl gets his gun back and his whole attitude changes and he's the little jerk that we all know he is. Um, I'm sorry if any of you are fans of Carl out there, but I just have never really liked him. I feel like every time Carl has a chance to redeem himself, he just doesn't. Like, <laughs> he just keeps doing things that I hate. So I really don't like him. <laughs> Sorry for all you Carl fans out there again, but I'm just not a big fan. Um, but Herschel, 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 I love him so much. He's like the grandpa that I never had. Um, I just, he's such a sweet, kind, caring guy, and he's willing to risk his life caring for these sick people that are his friends and family like Glenn. And so he goes out and he gets the elderberries and he makes elderberry tea. Um, and he hopes that it will help them and he goes in and he's like talking to Glenn 
and um, and some of the other people he's talking to the doctor um, and the doctor coughs on him and spits blood all over his face and he ends up taking off his handkerchief and um, and wiping his face and then leaving it off so he's really exposing himself to this I mean as if he wasn't already exposed but he's really got a good chance now of getting sick and possibly dying from this um, which is really upsetting for me too him and Glenn I don't know what we would do without them um, so that then leads to the biggest scene of the episode um, two points I want to make here first um, so Michonne Daryl Bob and Tyrese are going out on this mission to get antibiotics from a place that's pretty far away um, it's one of the longer missions that they're going to be going on and so they're driving and Daryl's messing with the radio and they hear a voice that sounds like it says something like survive or something I didn't quite catch it if you guys caught it let me know because I'm really interested to hear what you got from that but I'm also interested to hear who you think it is if there's another group somewhere um, what do you guys think? Because we know there's other people out there. Clearly, um, Daryl, they've been bringing back people to their community that they found out on runs. So we know there's other people out there, but just the fact that they're able to broadcast onto the radio. Um, but then before they can even discuss it or talk about it, they look up and there's walkers in the road and Daryl starts swerving the car, trying to avoid him. And then you see out and there is just like a million walkers everywhere. It's like the biggest super herd you've ever seen. Um, and they try and back up and they can't back up and so they storm out of the car and everyone jumps out of the car and starts fighting their way to the woods except Tyrese. And I kind of get the feeling that he's just sitting there like deciding whether or not he really wants to live anymore through this. He, I'm sure he thinks his sister is going to die. He's lost Karen. He doesn't really have a lot to live for at this moment. Um, and he's just, you know, trying to make a decision whether or not to keep on living. And this scene, now, I really don't want to ruin it for you, but hopefully you guys have read the comic, comic books too. Um, but there is a scene in the comics, in the prison, where um, Tyrese gets left behind in the gym, the prison gym, and there are massive walkers in there. And everyone assumes that he's died. Um, because he gets completely surrounded um, with walkers and there's like pretty much no possible way you can get out of that, him and his hammer. Um, and yet he survives. Um, a while later, I don't even know if it's the same day later, the same day or another, a couple days later, Rick goes back into the gym for whatever reason, I can't remember, it's been so long since I've read it, and finds Tyrese still alive in there and he, every walker dead. Um, and so this is kind of a play on that scene. I, I really think that they were going for that. Um, and Tyrese busts out of the car and he just starts hammering away all of these walkers and you think there's no way he could survive this. And then they all run off into the woods and they turn around and there's Tyrese and he has survived it. And we are kind of left hanging there. We don't know how far away from the place where the antibiotics is that they are. You know, are they hundred miles away or are they really close by um, we don't know but they're left in the woods with no car and no way to get back um, so now we're kind of left wondering how they're gonna get back or what's gonna happen um, if you guys don't know and hopefully like I said you've read the comics so you know what I'm talking about some of the comic book characters such as Abraham and Rosita and Eugene they've cast these guys um, these characters in the actual television series so they're bringing them in soon but we don't know what episode they're going to show up in and I really think that Abraham and Rosita and Eugene are going to be the people who rescue um, Daryl and Michonne and Bob and Tyrese um, because I don't know that I see really any other way out of this for them um, okay that is it for my notes look I had <laughs> two pages of notes this time um, but I think I've covered everything. I would love to talk to you guys more about um, anything that's happened in this episode. I'm most interested in the radio. I really want to know what your guys' theories are. Um, who is it? What group is it? Is it a group that is bad that we don't want them to come across? Or is it hope? That's what I'm interested in hearing about. Um, 
I hope you guys had a wonderful week. Um, I can't wait for the next episode and I would love it if you would subscribe, give me a big thumbs up and leave me comments. You can find me on Twitter at Meg underscore Stansfield um, and we can talk more about it. I have pretty much all Walking Dead fan friends on there. So that's pretty much all we talk about all day. So come join us. Um, I love you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye.